on Adam is an idiot, we discuss Adam's poor <laughs> life choices, the horrible and horrible sexual ineptitude. Uh, so what's up with his face? How does he function with such a high level of autism? And why the fucking God did he pick evil speak? Adam, first, I'd like you to explain yourself, and then could you kindly go fuck yourself? <laughs> the funniest part about that is that Adam wrote it. <laughs> In the third person. Uh, I uh, I fully deserve it, so I thought... <laughs> this is payment for last week when you watched Leprechaun 1. Fell asleep, so we watched Leprechaun Three and discussed it. <laughs> let's let's talk about that elephant in the room. <laughs> I I watched Leprechaun One, the most racist film <laughs> that I have personally, and I thought what? people more than people are scared. <laughs> I know, but I was personally invested in the racism <laughs> of Leprechaun One. <laughs> it was highly... We're talking about nationalism, not racism. <laughs> The Irish are a race. Come on, are we not? Uh, like, don't don't discount my people. What are you, Leprechaun One? Come on, I don't think this. white people uh, don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're all just one big amorphous Caucasian blob. It <laughs> That's true. So, so why did you? Yeah. So why did you pick Evil Speak, Adam? Um. Okay. Because well, Scott wouldn't let you pick Brain Scan. No, it's because Scott wouldn't let you pick fucking Rape Squad. <laughs> that we, the other elephant in the room that has also got its trunk up my butt is the fact that Adam picked Act of Vengeance, 1974. I watched it, and then I was like, guys, this would be suicide for our podcast. <laughs> I just like the, that Act of Vengeance is right up there with joining the mathletes as far as social suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some specific examples, Scott, because my intention okay, was to watch it last night, but I didn't. I actually took notes. I go on Amazon and I find Act of Avengers 1974. I know this is the correct one because it says AKA Rape Squad. So this is my explanation of, of some bad shit that's happening. So, so the, the, the first woman that is graphically raped in the movie. Her name's Linda, and she's ma- basically, like, the main character. She's, like, cleaning a horse stall, wearing Daisy Dukes, and a ta- uh, uh, like, this revealing button-down cowboy shirt for a woman that's, like, tied, you know, like, right at the solar plexus, and, and it's got, like, you know, her, like, her chest is almost completely open, and, and I'm like, who the fuck cleans <laughs> out, uh, uh, a horse stall with that? And then I see her running away from the rapist, who looks awful. He's wearing a, an orange prison jumpsuit and a hockey mask. And this movie predates Friday the 13th by a good four or five years, which is mind-blowing in itself. But then he also narrates his own rape. Like, this movie is not fun at all. I guess that the writer and producers thought that this movie would be empowering, but they still have women traipsing around nude. Which is constantly. really weird. Like, constantly. constantly. I guess I guess the whole point of this is that um, – and also, I don't think that a bunch of brave survivors are going to hang out together nude in a whirlpool after, like, having their judo training together and then discuss how they're going to get back at their rapist. Like, everything about this is awful. <sighs> Man, this movie is terrible. It was so terrible. And so I skipped around a little bit and and, and – barely made it to the end i didn't take any more notes and i'm going to try and forget that i that it happened but that was what i watched that and so when i told you guys like i don't want to discuss this movie it would be career suicide for our podcast um it was right after that after watching it and then you guys were like fine fuck it we'll do evil speak and i was like anything could be better than act of vengeance so watching evil speak Actually, I don't have a whole lot of negative stuff to say about it because it was so much better. <laughs> the pacing wasn't as bad as, as, as Act of Vengeance. I mean, that first hour of Evil Speak where nothing happens except for, like, really mean high school shit, I was like, this is a cakewalk. I, I was actually pretty enthralled with the story of Act of Vengeance because I... I mean, I didn't watch it. I was going to watch it last night. So Again, just, like, you pick these movies and you don't watch them in advance. Well, that's well, that's funny you say that because why did you pick Evil Speak again there, Adam? <laughs> uh, 
because because I I went online and I literally just typed in cool 80s horror trailers and this is like the first one that I I found on a list of like 20 and I did Adam went back in time to 1998 and was like t- typing into Angel Fire what are cool 80s horror movies <laughs> and evil speak goes up I put in my free 30 day trial of AOL and uh, I, I looked up I looked it up and it was like the first one that I watched and I didn't even scroll further down the page. I was like, oh yeah, that looks pretty good. Got Clint Howard in it, <laughs> computer devil. That's all right. We'll watch that. I, little did I know that it was just 30 minutes of, or fucking an hour and a half of fucking just Esteban. Oh, God, Esteban! <laughs> Esteban. Oh no, guys, don't be so mean. Uh, you're not on the soccer team anymore. You're uh, Clint Howard, you little pussy. You're all pussy. You're not on the side. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. You got to call him by his correct name. Cooper Dick. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, least creative, you. insulting nickname ever. Oh, no, the thing is that that was immersive. That is world building, man. If they're in a, in high school, Cooper Dick is the best shitty name to call someone. All oh, right, my God. So, so my favorite note that I have is... I have a note that just says, there's no way that fat bully is better at soccer than Cooper and Dick. Right. <laughs> like, uh, okay, so this is here, – here's here's the top down, like the, the, the 10,000 feet look on Evil Speak. This is Carrie with the genders reversed. That's all it is. It even has pigs in it. <laughs> um, but that's okay. This movie was actually pretty fun. I enjoyed myself. I enjoyed myself because it's so absurd. And also, okay, the intro, so epic. Like, la 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 la. Like all the, Dude, the, the, the song, like, the fucking like Damien song remix <laughs> that they play throughout the whole movie. <laughs> oh my god, did Adam just turn into one of the mannequins from Tourist Trap? <laughs> this is already a better episode than that one. <laughs> okay. Wait, 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 your wait. heart explode from terror. <laughs> okay, listen. That beginning of Evil Speak, I so I went in knowing nothing except for Clint Howard and a computer. That's all I knew. So um, how confused are you when it was like the dark ages? I was like, I have a note. Weirdest Thundercats episode ever. <laughs> <laughs> um, so so then it cuts to, to present day and you see Clint Howard looking kind of normal. So how when what happened between 1981 and 1991 that Clint Howard went from normal to Clint Howard? <laughs> <laughs> the beginning and end of this movie is what happened because by the oh, end of this movie, he he looks like Danny DeVito in the eleventh season of fucking It's Always Sunny. Like he just looks like a wreck. He's all sweaty. His hair's all fucked up. His eyes are going in three different directions somehow. Like I love oh, the fact yeah. that they're at least making fun of somebody who looks like they should be made fun of. So so the shower scene was when I realized that Adam cinched this movie for himself. Like, male shower scene. I know that you're in heaven. That scene was so weird. It's just two dudes who are unabashedly checking out each other's dicks. Being all like, oh, what's the matter, Cooper Dick? You don't have any parents. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there was another movie that we discussed recently that where they were making fun of a, of a kid who had no parents. Oh, oh, but, but so okay, funny. so that that point right there with the the um, the – Shower scene, I was like, oh, shower scene in the first five minutes. It's Carrie. This movie's start is so slow. Like, I, I really understand that the 80s were a different time, and they were really trying to pad this movie out to be 135 min- or an hour and 35 minutes. But holy shit. It, <laughs> as soon, but as soon as he's, like, on his computer, on his Apple IIe with the green screen, I had such nostalgia overload because I, like, I, I played games on an Apple II when I was – you know, like six. Do you want to hear the note that shows how much Adam's note writing has influenced the way that I write notes? Okay. There's a note in here that says, when the book goes missing, Cooper Dick tries to confront the bullies at the local disco roller rink and <laughs> nothing, nothing happens in this movie like ever. 
<laughs> it's true. <laughs> and all like uh, and doesn't I have like, I, I I have a note where it says this is the point in the movie where it tries to trick me into thinking that something's going to happen. <laughs> but no, nothing happens. No, nothing happens. Gonna get to like the one hour mark out of an hour and a half movie with only a couple notes. Like this, that's how this movie is. Like all the sexy secretary, she's Chekhov's gun with boobies. Like you know she's there to get killed later for no reason. But that roller party is sweet. It made me really miss roller parties. Because, like, you get to have the shitty pizza that's on the, the cardboard with the square pieces of pepperoni. You know, like those little squares of pepperoni. And, like, really shitty hot dogs that have been under a heat lamp for an hour or two. But then you get to roller bl- or you get to roller skate. So I feel like every roller skating rink had, like, their thing. <laughs> and and uh, my local one was a thing called the Gator. And it was that they would play the song um, "Shake It Up" by by the Cars, <laughs> and every and every once in a while, the guy on the microphone would go "Gator," and you were supposed to get on the ground and kick your skates in the air. <laughs> what? Yeah, and they would give out prizes for whoever was the best Gatorer that night. Man, Philadelphia sucks. <laughs> Well, I I lived in Canada, so we didn't have like roller skating. We had actual skating. ice skating. But they yeah. they did definitely still play Fifth of Beethoven by Electric Light Orchestra whenever they had the opportunity to do it. So <laughs> that is the most Canadian thing I think you've ever said. Satan, help me stand erect. Is a, is a note that I have, and I don't remember why. <laughs> Because that's what he types into the computer. It's like, help me stand erect in the yes. face of my enemies. And it's like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, my God. Oh, I'm going to shove your boner in that John Travolta lookalike's face. Like, oh. Uh. Well, obviously, it's military. It's a military academy. That's all they got. But those dogs are cute as fuck. And I, and I wrote in my notes, you better not fail that dog, Clint Howard. Is so help me, God. And then he does his, and then he um, has, the next scene is he's down in his little weird dungeon. He, he he says that incantation with the weirdest, the weirdest way possible. He goes, and without delay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I remembered why Clint Howard is a shit actor. Because um, he can't but, say delay properly. <laughs> without delay. It's, I, I want that as a sound clip in in a metal song. I just that's all I want. And man, okay, so Anton LaVey apparently loved this movie and thought that it was an accurate representation of a satanic incantation. So 1981 satanic rituals sounded just like this. It's just <laughs> weird. I'm gonna go with my gut and say that Satanism was really hokey in the 80s. <laughs> it's still really hokey. Um, <laughs> okay. So- Thanks. We were talking about this while we were waiting for for Scott to to get connected. That this fucking movie was a video nasty. Yeah, I knew that too. And I was okay. We're, I, I think we're not at the point where we have to exp- where we can actually say the point that or the, the the scene that gave it that explanation. Like I think it was a Satanism, obviously. But there is one specific kill that I was like, what, I was up until that kill, I was like. This would be stupid. Like, why is there? Why is this video nasty? Like, people are getting maimed by puppet boars. It's not that bad. Um, but um, uh, yeah, I guess it is just like the sacrilege of that one kill at the end there that probably pissed them off and, and no, made them. No, 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 no. Can I tell you what it is? Is it what I? Yeah. Is I, I'm assuming it's the thing that I have written down as a note that says, "Well, that decapitation scene was pretty fucking badass." Yeah, I, I have. Head explosion! Fuck yeah! That's what I have all in caps. <laughs> that head explosion is what they pro- was probably. I mean, the Satanism. I'm sure. Played a 1980s factor. England was like no, 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 and they were like wringing their hands over the satanic panic. But uh, that head explosion was it right there. Um, maybe also the fact that the the crucified Jesus statue had a nail from his hand go and s- go right between the eyes of a pastor. So there's that. But um, yeah, I think that must have been it. Like it was because it was so sacrilegious to have done that. Like to to get the Jesus nail to kill a pastor right through his fucking forehead. Like I assume that that was what they were upset about. Because I mean, this is in no way on the same level as like Cannibal Ferox and like that kind of shit that that is uh, on that video nasty list. Like 
this should not be on the same level. No, I agree. But um, we're, we're, we're skipping ahead a little bit. Let me go back to two notes that I, three notes that I have. Um, so I think it's funny when people insult each other, each insult men as cocksuckers. Like, why is cocksucker an insult? You don't like getting oral? Everybody likes oral. Like, men like getting oral. Women like getting oral. Everybody likes oral. Like, that's not an insult. Uh, <laughs> I think you're misunderstanding. I mean, it's not. It's not saying like, "Oh, you like to get your cock sucked." No, 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 no. Adam, stop. Shut the fuck up. I understand that it's the gay aspect of it, but why would you like shame somebody? If like, because you're just as gay as the guy giving you a blowjob. Like, like stupid. Oh, so dumb. But anyway, that just it just it was like they kept calling him a cocksucker, and I was like, this is so weird. I haven't heard that term in forever. Yeah, it's um, not anyway. really. A, it doesn't get thrown around very frequently but, anymore. Yeah, and then there's like the semi-casual rape jokes with the that asshole in the basement, and then he's like basically going to rape Clint Howard, and then luckily the computer saves him with its little star or his little pentagrams but then the dude's head gets snapped backwards and then clint howard like lets the body down easy i'm like dude he's dead as shit i don't think you need to be careful with that body i described it in my notes as a planetarium laser light show occurs (laughs) 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 yeah what are what are those things where like you get a circle and then you draw uh like in the circle it was like and it made like a pattern on the um, like a scopogram or something like that. Yeah, yeah, like an o- oscilloscope or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's what was going on in that computer. Fuck, that was so stupid. Oh, uh, so dumb. The best part about that is that that they didn't actually the computers weren't powerful enough to 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 create that design like actively, and so they had to like special effect that onto the screen, which is so <laughs> funny to me. Is that computers were. It, it, 1981. I mean, it was a long time ago. None of us were alive. It just seems like such a funny thing that they did have the Apple IIe, but it couldn't actually run a program to make that those those pentagrams. Just funny. A suspension of disbelief broken when sexy secretary gets undressed by the fire and then trapes his nude to the bathroom. Like, yeah, nobody I was, does I was that. Weirded out by that as well. I was like, "Why don't you take your clothes off somewhere else?" Like, and she's just throwing them on the living room floor. I'm like, "What a pig! Yeah. Fucking get, pick your shit up! Don't make a mess <laughs> around." <laughs> also, but I mean, to be fair, like, thank you for getting naked for the viewer. That's a, you know, like, thank you for that. But it's just so odd. Like, just, just video, just shoot the. Her taking her clothes off, sexy like in the bathroom, so weird. And then, so then she gets in the shower, and then she gets eaten by pigs, which would have been eaten by humans. So I like that angle. <laughs> <laughs> well, then, why uh, why did this why did this military school keep wild boars and not like just normal looking pigs? Because they're like later on, like the pigs all come in and they've got, got they've got like tusks. Shit. Yeah, the, yeah, tusks. Hey, one of your favorite movies. Hey. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know, and uh, that, I really think that of the most egregious logic errors in this film, that's not one of them. <laughs> but can we just talk a second about the Miss Heavy Artillery pageant? That's a terrible joke, Miss Heavy Artillery. Yeah, like it's a boob joke, and of course, then they give it to the girl with the biggest boobs. Even though there was some like the cute girl in with the blonde hair that you kind of see three or four times in the movie, it, who isn't really utilized very much. I, I thought that she was supposed to be like nice to Clint Howard, but then after the after the pageant, she's just as shitty as everybody else. She got spoiled by that victory. Yeah. And then, oh, and then they go down to the, they go down to his little lair and they find the computer and they find the dog and the one motherfucker picks the dog up by the scruff. And I was like, oh, I'm so going to be excited when you die. (laughs) Yeah, I I knew that there was a little bit of dog mistreatment in this movie and wasn't sure how Scott was going to feel about it. But I guess the secret to making Scott acceptable to dog mistreatment is rape squad beforehand. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> I didn't say I was okay with this. I just said that this movie's shit pacing was a welcome relief from from, from act of vengeance. So, and then it couldn't have been even more ham fisted when the priest gets the nail in his forehead, and then Clint Howard comes flying up out of the burning floor, and then the fat guy gets eaten by pigs because he's like piggy getting eaten by pigs. Oh, and then the twist at the end is so dumb. This movie, hey, what, did, I, uh, what did the text say? The text was on the screen so fucking fast. It said that he was catatonic, but uh, and he was put in a hospital. But then it was like he was now living in the computer, and Esteban was out or something. Yeah. Esteban! Esteban! <laughs> <laughs> I don't. How is it that there's this this trope that we see in all these goddamn movies we watch? Where they have to yell a name over and over and over again. So I, I think it's time for Adam to to basically because because Scott's been steamrolling the conversation. Lately. Yeah, I'm sorry. I thought that Adam was gonna like pop in, but apparently not. <laughs> well, and I have well, so little to say because I legitimately fell asleep last night while watching this movie. <laughs> that's that's oh <laughs> like, God. but I had seen it once before, so I was like, ah, I could just read Wikipedia and go from there. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna watch this again. Well, and there's always, I've so- got I've got a couple of notes that we did kind of blow through. So I mean, like I'm gonna read those off if if you guys are are ready for that. I guess that's fine. So I I mean, there's that scene after the Miss Heavy Artillery, which by the way was a fucking sham of a competition. That first <laughs> yeah, girl should have won. The big boobs. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> um, but but he talks to those girls and then the guys steal his pants and they leave him like sitting in the grass. And that that guy comes up and he's like, mm, oh, God, Cooper Smith, how could you have done this? And I'm like, what did you think that the guy just took his own pants off and rolled around in the grass? Question. Like, what the f- <laughs> question? So, first of all, he's not sitting on the grass. He's fucking laying face down, like unable to breathe. He's so upset because he's got his face in grass. I, I thought that. Okay, were they smoking joints? Because that's what I took away from that. Yes, they were. They were. They were smoking joints. Okay, that's what I thought was they're smoking weed. And then that asshole guy comes up and was like, how could you? Basically, like he smelled the weed and was – that was his final way to get rid of Cooper Smith. Okay, that makes, that's that what makes I thought. sense. But then again, um, who cares about making sense when it's evil speak? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Great, uh, every great time- we haven't talked about this, but great poster. <laughs> Like just oh my god, it's fantastic! <laughs> I had way if, if I had seen that before starting the film and not having watched Act of Vengeance right before it, I would have had higher expectations. Well, I mean, like it, uh, it, it the, the trailer was pretty good for it too. Like it tricked me, guys. It made me think it was going to be a good movie, but <laughs> because uh, it's nineteen ninety eight, you were on Angel Fire watching clips from Evil Speak. That's the way to. To do it, I have no other. I, I know whether well, I, I went to the library, I uh, used their yes. Apple II computers. No, they didn't have <laughs> Apple IIs by that point. They had they had Windows. The funny thing is, is that in 1998, I think I was on Angel Fire reading up about Daniel Danielle Harris because I think that, that was during my serious crush on her, and and she did a bunch of shitty stuff in in uh, the mid to late 90s, and then she did Urban Legends. Which was awesome. She's the best part also, about that movie. Also a piece of shit, fucker. <laughs> I don't know why no, you guys like that let's watch that movie. movie. Let's watch that movie. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> we watched Evil Speak for you, and I didn't complain. I, I know a bunch of people, because Urban Legends was filmed in Canada. I actually know people that are extras and in the background of that movie. That would be a great discussion then. Dude, listen, it would be my trilogy. It would start with House on Haunted Hill remake. It's fall. It goes into Valentine, and it ends with Urban Legends. Maybe Matt could could give me a, a be, give me a, do me a solid and do the disturbing behavior because uh, that's coming out on Blu-ray. He said, and we could even maybe do Teaching Mrs. Tingle because I know Adam likes movies with very slow plots. The yeah, he likes movies with the happened. word Tingle in a title. <laughs> <laughs> Can we do a double feature, The Tingler, teaching Mrs. Tingle? It's so ridiculous. You're worried about <laughs> Rape Squad being career suicide. <laughs> <laughs> it's because I didn't want to say the R word ten times a minute for a 45-minute podcast. Well, we fucking, fucking failed so far this episode. No, 
continue with your thoughts and notes, Adam. Um, well, just that Clint Howard's super unattractive. Like, he's very, very unattractive, man. He's not supernatural uh, good looking. <laughs> no, certainly not. He's not, like, my favorite male lead of a certain TV show that I like. It makes sense in context. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> You're you're such a cocksucker. <laughs> okay, um, man. If whenever Clint Howard was ever on an episode of Supernatural, that would be like the be all end all. You would lose your fucking mind. Man. They'd save oh money God. on the makeup budget. They'd just bring him out normal. <laughs> be like, job's done. The best part is that in ticks. He still has prosthetics on his face. He's like, Calvin, it's inside me. He looks more normal when he has the prosthetics on his face. <laughs> you guys are terrible. <laughs> he's so he he's looks rich and famous. Face. You guys are fucking nobodies. He was in like the prime of his life when when he was like the most virile and going to be the most attractive that he ever was going to be, and he was ugly as. Fuck, man! Like I feel so bad for this guy. Like he's just so terminally unattractive. But every every <laughs> every time that he's at the computer and he's typing something from the book, he looks like like Stevie like Stevie Wonder. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> like this is like getting his hands going. It's like absolutely ridiculous. Like he's never touched a computer before, but um, <laughs> or a woman. Or a woman. <laughs> He's uh, definitely fed some pigs. So, um, I was confused. I thought that this roller disco, for some reason, was at the military academy. I was like, why does this military <laughs> academy have a, have a roller disco in it? It was so silly. Um, anyways, he, he becomes friends with... He, he becomes unlikely friends with the chef, which is like the weirdest part of the movie. He's like, hey, you kid, c- come back here. Come here. And Clint Howard's like, Ugh, I'm ugly. There's chances that he he does anything to me are pretty low. So he goes <laughs> and he gives him a puppy. That's like the best yeah, part of the movie. Is like Clint Howard gets shit on for an hour and ten minutes, and at the an hour and eleven minute mark, gets a puppy. Well, he he does have that one black friend that is constantly waiting in the shadows to save him from every bullying scenario that he gets into. It's, very weird that that guy just swoops in out of nowhere all the time. Anyways, at the end of this movie... Oh, go ahead. No, no I, I started a thought, realized it would be, it would be idiotic to say, and I... <laughs> were you, were you, were you going to make a Dark Knight joke? <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's so much better. Oh, my God. <laughs> so... <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, but we're gonna have to cut it. It's so bad. <laughs> Did you guys notice that the chef doesn't wear a shirt? Like he doesn't have yeah. a shirt on. He's just wearing a, 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 a an apron. Which one? Super unsanitary. Two. Super weird. And it's also <laughs> nighttime. Why is he still wearing an apron? Go I home. That's the most. A, a- Precious example of him breaking the health and safety act. He probably let a dog give birth in that fucking kitchen. (laughs) 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 Anyways, the end of this movie does not make it worth it. I was looking at the uh, at the like timer on it and I was like, wow, there's only like 10 minutes left of this movie. Like there's no way that they can jam in enough cool shit to make it worthwhile for me to have watched this. And they don't. They really don't. That that head splitting uh, that you guys talked about, it looked like somebody just like it looked like a giant egg. Like they just cracked into a ju- like the way yeah, that his head broke like that. No, it was, yeah. it was, no, it was a paper mache full of jello. I still yeah, think it, it definitely was, was. I mean, it was and, no and then, waxwork head explosion, but it was still oh, good. Definitely not. And then there was a another like decapitation. But you can see that whoever swung the sword, like, kind of missed the mark, and it takes off, like, the jaw of the dummy's face. Oh, that's the one uh, that I was referring to. That's the one that I love. I love that it has that, like, weird, he cuts him in half via the jaw. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that one was fucking strange. And I didn't even see how the main bully got killed. Did he just get eaten by pigs, I guess? Is that... No, the main... Uh, fuck, I don't remember. Actually, I, I zoned out after the, the, the bully got... Or the pig guy got eaten by pigs. That's how great this movie is. It's just like the main antagonist. I don't even remember what the fuck happened to him at the end of this movie. (laughs) 
but yeah, and then it's like I um uh, fucking what's his face, Cooper Smith, I will return. Duh, 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 duh. And I'm like, why does Esteban not uh, why, Esteban! What, why, does he, <laughs> why does he replace Esteban now? Esteban is still a sentient like devil being. What the what happened? What happened to him? Anyways, so it was pretty awful. Um, <laughs> I will try and do a little more research next time, guys. You won't. We know you <laughs> no, won't. No, probably not. I've already made my pick, which is going to be a completely 180 different type of movie, so that'll be fun. Yeah, I'm kind of excited uh, for that next pick. I'm most excited for Matt's next pick, but that's no surprise. Oh, I think that's your next pick. Yep. Oh, thanks, guys. You, so, so <laughs> you I was, like my picks. I was... <laughs> I was told that I have to tell this story on the podcast and it'll make you guys feel better about me having, uh, having missed, uh, the leprechaun podcast because it's a, a story of me embarrassing the shit out of myself. So it'll be good. You guys ready? Yeah. Ready. Okay. So, um, I went to Ottawa to visit, uh, my friend Andy the other day, the one that picked, uh, demon Knight. So anyways, we, I went up there, I saw Deadpool with him. We drank uh, way, way too much alcohol, and I had to hop on a Greyhound bus to to come home. On the Greyhound bus, just unfucking believably hungover, just foobard, like just fucked up. I'm like sleeping in these awkward, fucked up positions. I've got my like face pushed into the seat in front of me. Um, I'm asking the people around me if they have any water because I'm so dehydrated that I'm like slowly dying on this bus. Um, and anyways, I, I get home and I, I took a nap and I, I felt a little better. I got up and I went to go hop in the shower and I noticed that in big letters, someone had drawn the word cock lover across my <laughs> stomach in, in like lipstick or makeup or something. And, and I, I look in the mirror and I turn around and it says hashtag cum lover in big <laughs> old letters back? on my back, right? Like, ra- like tramp stamped across my back. And at at this point, no, no, it was fucking Andy that did it. But it was at this point that I realized that I was sleeping in such weird, awkward positions on that bus that for sure my shirt was pulled up at the back. (laughs) And everyone that was sitting around me, everyone that was sitting around me on that bus could see that it says hashtag cum lover across my back. And I was acting like. I was acting like a real weirdo, too. I was like, can I please have water? Like, anybody, somebody help me. And they probably thought that I was, like, a gay prostitute. That I just had, like, the worst weekend ever. And I was taking the bus back from Ottawa. So, like, just, oh, man, I was fucking, I was furious for about two two seconds. And then I, like, collapsed laughing on my bathroom floor. Because I was like, the dude next to me was probably, like, and there was no additional seats on the bus. There was nowhere for this guy to go. He was probably like, get me the fuck away from <laughs> this guy. Like, God. So I was told I had to tell that story. I hope you feel better about me having this leprechaun. <laughs> so what did you watch this week, Adam? The Venture Brothers and It's Always Sunny. I got over my weird, like, over-empathetic thing that I had about watching It's Always Sunny. Because when, when I watch comedies where it's all based on, like, the awkwardness of the situation... I always feel empathetic for the characters and it gives me like secondhand embarrassment for them. But, you know, like marathoning a lot of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, I realized that there is no redeemable characters in that show and they're all pieces of fucking just complete human garbage. So it's fun to watch them be in these like awkward situations and make complete asses of themselves. I don't feel empathy for them because they're awful. They're all like sociopaths and horrible human beings. So um, I finally am enjoying watching that show as opposed to like cringing and wincing when I watch it. Uh, so, yeah, I've been enjoying the new season of that a lot. Uh, at Weird Ass Movie Night, we watched Basket Case, the original Basket Case. I'm very excited for, for one day in the future when we watch Basket Case for this podcast. Because Are we really going to watch Basket Case or are we going to watch Basket Case 2? Uh, I feel like we should watch all three of them at some point or another because they're all their own weird version of fucked up and crazy. <laughs> yeah, but I also don't want to dedicate three weeks to Basket Case, so probably that will be a one weeker. <laughs> just well, fucking we're, well, not in a row. I'm not doing like Basket Case one, two, and three in the same time period. Scott, what did you watch this week? I watched a film that I hinted at last week. I said that I watched a film with William Sadler in it. 
because you were like, do you uh, do you read Kurt Vonnegut? <laughs> and the whole was I don't, uh, anyway. Um, so, and I mentioned disturbing behavior earlier in this episode. So it's definitely uh, William Sadler on the brain uh, right now. I watched The Hills Run Red. Have you guys heard about that movie from 2009? I've seen that DVD advertised in a shit ton of comic books and magazines. <laughs> I liked it until the last 20 minutes, and then I really regretted watching it. The concept is not bad, but then it just made me feel real gross. So I, I always stayed away from it because I really hated the, the, the monster design. Babyface. That, that's, he's plastered all over the DVD. But, but um, I don't know, somebody on our horror, maybe some article I read was like, yeah, this is a pretty good movie. Just expect, don't expect too much. And I was like, eh, why not? And then I saw that William Sadler was in it, and I was like, sold. So I watched it. And uh, the, the, the concept is that this guy is obsessed with this trailer for a movie called The Hills Run Red from the 70s that was like so dark that – you know, it never got released or something like that. So he goes looking for the director in the, you know, backwaters of Virginia or something. Because that makes sense. That's a good idea. He finds his daughter who is now a stripper who is also a heroin addict. And then so, so of course, the, the protagonist gets her clean. He makes her go through withdrawal. And he, he basically, like, you know, keeps her tied up for three or four days until she's better. And then they go out to the woods to where she grew up to try and find her dad. And um, shenanigans ensue. Babyface comes out and kills some people. And there's some really just gross things that happen. Uh, William Sadler probably got paid too much for the amount of screen time he was in it. Uh, but he goes balls to the wall, as usual. So, I mean, he's definitely killing it like he did in Demon Knight. And uh, I would definitely recommend you not watch that film. All right. Good to know. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> Asaba! Asaba! <laughs> so that was 1981's Evil Speak as picked by our very own Adam. Uh, so, you know, this is what happens when you're not emailing us movie suggestions. So make sure <laughs> that you email us the movie suggestions at hmnpodcast at gmail.com. And, uh, you know, if you just have some questions about what the fuck you're listening to, you can also send some questions there, and we'll be happy to to answer any questions in future mailbag episodes. It's been a while. We need to do another mailbag soon. So let's get some questions over. Then I don't have to subject myself to this crap. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, thanks for listening, and we'll be back next week with another movie, and shoot us some suggestions at hmmpodcast at gmail.com. I have my uh, my tablet, which uh, I broke the other day, so only part of the screen worked. <laughs> Dude, were you trying That's to like what, dick slap a picture of your girlfriend or something? I attached one of those uh, one of those things where you can put a uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, flashlight. You can like put a flashlight <laughs> onto the, uh, the device that you're watching. Right, it like wraps around the device, and then you fuck your uh, fuck your tablet. Um, yeah, please tell me you're editing. That you're, that you're still recording. Oh yeah, I am. Yes. <laughs> What's Much like Adam and his flesh-like tablet combo. I uh, so I fucked it so hard that the screen shattered on it. Um, I'm so sure I have. That's why I haven't been using it. Have you ever fucked so hard that you broke a bed? Because my bed, is, my bed is currently broken because of that right now. So I'm sleeping on my couch for like a month. <laughs> because you fucked your tablet so hard. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. Well, no, the tablet. I fucked. I fucked the tablet to death. But the bed, it was. A, <laughs> a, that was a human being. That was. Are you the, sure? <laughs> the, the, wait, so the bed is is sentient, or there was a person? Oh, the bed? Oh, okay, the bed, come on. 
Yeah, it's it's deathbed, the death that gets fucked to death. (laughs) (laughs) You're listening to the Geekscape Network.